Okay, so this is an example on moving wires. We have here a rod, a metal rod. Its length is 30 centimeters. Uh, it is moving in this direction, which we call this direction here, the Z direction, okay? And um, uh, the current, th this is, a, this is a, a pretty long wire. So we're gonna create like an infinite wire. It carries the current 10 amperes. Um, and this is the direction of exit direction of Y. Y will have to be going into the page. Uh, so they are telling us that this uh, rod moves at a constant velocity of 5 meters per second. So the rod is moving in this direction at a constant velocity of 5 meters per second. So the whole rod is moving as a whole in this direction. We want to calculate V1 minus V2, where V1 is, the, is this terminal or this side of the y of the rod, this and terminal 2 is the other one. Okay, before we start to calculate it or to solve this problem, we have to do some analysis, think about it. There is, because the wire is moving in a magnetic field, what, where is the magnetic com field coming from? It's coming from the magnetic field of the wire. The wire, as we agree, agreed, create uh, circles around it. So if I take uh, the field at a point like this one here, it's going to be coming out from the page. Okay, I'm trying to observe the right-hand rule here. If I take a point like this one on the rod, it's going to be going into the page. Okay, it creates these closed lines. So, the expression for the magnetic field of an infinite wire is I over 2 by rho A phi. Phi is the angular direction. The angular direction here is the direction going uh, at every point on the road is the direction going into the beach, which is simply the y direction. And the distance from the wire, we can call it here x. So this x, where x changes from 10 to 30. Okay? So we know that the magnetic field created by the wire on the rod is going to be in the y direction. So it's going something like this, okay? So it's going into the beach here. It's coming out from the beach here. So the a phi of the expression is simply the a y. And the distance through that we need for the, for the expression is nothing but x. Now, if you take the cross product between u, the direction of the movement of the road, and the magnetic field, u cross b will actually be pointing in the negative x direction. So it's not, it's not that difficult to see that the direction of u cross b would be this direction here. So this is the direction of the induced um, uh, field, induced, induced field or the equivalent electric field. So what this electric field is trying to do is trying to move neg positive charges in this direction to this end. It's trying to move negative charges to this end. And as a result, before even I start so doing any solution, I can tell that this terminal will be higher in potential than this one. Okay? So, we, we want us to calculate V1 minus V2, so we have to integrate uh, this electric field of DL, and this is a DL over which this electric field exists. Okay? So these are the main elements of the solution. Now let's take a look at detail, the detailed answer of this question. Okay, so we have this infinite wire. The magnetic field created by an infinite wire is mu naught I over 2 by rho A phi. This is when I say magnetic field, I mean here magnetic flux density B. Okay, this is why you multiply it by mu naught. A phi at every point on the rod, because the, the, the field lines are like circles, you are going out from the page here and you are going to the page inside the page here. A phi is nothing but A y. Okay, the distance between every point on the rod to the wire is nothing but x. So I replaced here rho by x, I replaced a phi by a y. Now we know that because the wire is moving in that magnetic field, there will be an equivalent electric field created. And this electric field will try to move the free charges existing in the wire to one end or the other depending on its direction. So let's calculate this equivalent electric field. It is u cross b as we agreed earlier. U is 5 in the z direction because the whole rod is moving in the z direction at a constant velocity of 5. Okay. Now, this is B. B is in the y direction. AZ cross AY will give you minus AX. Remember this triangle we talked about in class? We said X, Y, and Z. Okay. So, AX cross AY gives you AZ. AY cross AZ gives you AX. AZ cross X gives you a Y. But you go in the counterwise direction, 
then az cross ay will give you minus ax so this will give you minus ax and this current is 10 ampere 10 multiplying 5 will give us 50 so we have here and and, and this equivalent electric field is actually pointing in the minus ax direction from right to left so it's going to move positive charge to the side negative charge to this side is going to make this side higher in potential than this one so i know this whole rod really looks like a battery with this polarity and if i connect it to an external resistance i'm gonna close the loop and then a current will start flowing but right now the loop is simply open there is only a battery and this battery has this uh, electric equivalent electric feed which we just calculated here okay we now proceed our target is to calculate v1 minus v2 but as we agreed the potential is the integral of the electric field then we have to integrate em em dot dl and dl here along this direction is nothing but dx ax okay so we can carry out the integral the same way we did for all uh, potentials and let's take a look at at what's happening okay so i write here the expression v1 minus v2 is the integral from 2 to 1 em dot dl i'm putting these question marks here if, of course if we were in class I would have told you, is this correct? Some of you would immediately say, no, Dr. Bakker, this is not correct. Because everything that we have learned so far tells us that V1 minus V2 is integral from 1 to 2 EM dot DL. Well, all the other fields we discussed before were results of charges. While here you are talking about the electric field inside the battery, which is, very, which is different. So if you have a battery like this one, okay, let's talk about the battery like this one. The electric field inside the battery is pointing this way. If you talk about an equivalent electric field, it's trying to make positive charges accumulate this way and negative charges accumulate on the other side. Okay? Then, even though this is the direction of the electric field, but we say that this side is higher in potential than this one. So when you talk about integrating inside the battery, you have to reverse the order. V1 minus V2 is the integral from 2 to 1 of em dot dl otherwise you're gonna get a negative answer okay this is a very fine point and i don't think it's explained in the book i'm not integrating outside the battery i'm integrating inside the battery and inside the battery the equivalent field is trying to move, move positive charge to this side negative charge this side and even though this is the direction of the field we say that this is higher than this one okay very important to understand that now this is the electric field we calculated. We're going to integrate from 2 to 1, then from 0.4, x equal to 0.4, to x equal to 0.1, and ax dot x is going to give you 1. Then we have here the integral of 1 over x is going to give us ln x, both upper limit minus lower limit, and the integrate the negative sign. So you get ln 0.1 over 0.4, the negative sign will give you ln of 0.4 over 0.1, then it's ln of 4. Now you substitute, I have 50, I have mu naught 4 by 10 to the minus 7, and here uh, this is 2 by, x is gone already because it became the ln. Uh, if you calculate this one, you get 13.9 microvolt. And the answer, of course, must be positive. The answer cannot be negative. If you make it from 1 to 2 here, you're going to get a negative answer, which doesn't make sense. So just remember, when you are integrating inside the battery, V1 minus V2 is the integral from 2 to 1 of EM dot DL.